Albany Halftime Report. We are getting to the heart of the action as it is happening. Another dramatic sell-off underway as we speak. We are sitting pretty much at the lows of the session. Tech and financials are the culprits. How are the pros protecting their profits as we head down the road to a possible correction? Let's get to the word on the street right now. Your fast money crew today, Guy Adami from Drake and Capital, Scott Redler from T3Live.com, John Najarian, Dr. J from OptionMonster.com, and Eugene Profit from Profit Investment Management. Guy. You Mel. said it all along, good news, bad price action, and that is exactly what we are seeing in today's session. Go back to Intel, and I'm not going to make sudden movements because I pixelate, but go back and check out Intel before earnings and the day after earnings. Look at the volume it traded. Look at the price action. Look at the subsequent move. That was the tell for tech. That was the tell for the rest of the tape. We've trying to been tell you folks about that. Good news, bad action. You know what? You got to be market agnostic. You got to watch with the market and listen to what it's telling you. Eugene Prophet, I was noticing on the calendar that uh, last Tuesday we were sitting at 15 month highs. Wednesday was when the Volcker plan was announced. Now we're down about 6% since then. We've had some pretty good earnings report at this point. Are you willing to step in and buy some of these dips, or is that political uncertainty still too much to look past? I, I think the political uncertainty is playing a big role, but also at that same time you had jobless numbers that came in a little bit worse than expected and I think that's more the driver. Really? The jobless claims numbers? Usually we don't really, uh, I don't know. All right, uh, Dr. J, <laughs> going to go to the chart of the day. Want to take a look at the VIX. We are seeing a nice spike today. No surprise given uh, the big turns in the market that we have. Uh, there was an interesting note out of Convergex this morning saying essentially that they expect uh, the VIX to remain fairly range bound because as long as there is some sort of consensus that rate hikes are not going to come this year, that the VIX will remain relatively low. Do you buy that, or, or does that not play out in the options market? No, I don't yeah. uh, buy that at all. In fact, uh, I, I think everybody's thinking that rates, in fact, yesterday when you guys asked to poll on air, I didn't see a single expert hold up their hand and say, we expect rates to be going up this year. Instead, I think what it is is just introduction of more uh, volatility to the market by Washington, D.C., by the President of the United States when he decides to attack the only group of stocks that was still doing pretty well, the banking stocks last week. That coincided with that Tuesday move you talked about, 15-month highs. Right. So I'm not uh, thinking that we're going to see volatility easing anytime soon. You mentioned Washington, so we must make note of the fact that the uh, debate over Ben Bernanke, this is a cloture movement, is underway on the floor, so they will vote so whether or not it will go to a final vote right now, uh, it is underway. Scott Redler, take a look at the charts for us. What do you see here for the S&P 500? We've been seeing technical damage add up, and I agree with Guy. Back when Intel was sold on the news, the confirmation to the uptrend break when the day that Goldman Sachs actually got sold on a great report, now we're starting to see a very defensive mode. 1080 to 1085 was holding the past three days. Today, it sliced through there. They sold the up open. Next area to watch is about 1072, which we might see by the close. But the big area, the compelling area, will be about 1040, which would be about a 10% a correction off the highs. Guy Downey, based on the uh, price action, some of the stocks that you've been tracking in the shadow bear market, these are stocks that have made some pretty significant move downwards. Um, uh, do you see 1040 on the horizon, as Scott does? Yeah, I see actually more than that, to be honest with you. I mean, Freeport Mac, everybody's love affair stock. We talked about that stock. It had a number of corrections this year, but every single time, higher highs, higher lows. That was until Friday when we closed below 75.40, and look where we are now. These stocks are technically broken now. You can get all crazy and say, you know, we're still in a bull market. But again, be market agnostic. Look at the tape. These names are broken, and I think now the S&P is finally catching up. All right, let's talk about what is uh, killing today's market, and that is uh, technology. Lousy earnings from Qualcomm yesterday after the Bell, Motorola, and then the tech selling uh, really spreading throughout the NASDAQ. Taking a look at Microsoft, which does report after the Bell today, it is down by about 2%. Uh, Scott Redler, you'd step in somewhere around where? I'd say about 28, 28, 50. The difference with Microsoft right now is it's not trading at the highs as it's reporting its earnings. And I do think Microsoft's going to have a really good quarter and some pretty good guidance. So actually, Microsoft could be a bounce candidate. If it gets sold enough into the close, I might take a stab, go long a little Microsoft, because I think the report's going to be good for a short-term bounce. There is carnage, and I mean carnage, in the semiconductor index. It is down by almost 4% right now. Uh, Dr. J, do you have a position here? I know your brother Pete uh, got long Intel shortly after the earnings. And wondering if you are in that trade as well, and then how are you uh, doing? What are you doing, in fact, to uh, save that? Right, uh, I'm not in Intel right now, thankfully, uh, but I did get short a little Qualcomm because of some put activity, and uh, Qualcomm broke down hard. And this is a Guy Adami special. 
because you look at the options, 260,000 options today versus a normal of 40,000. Stock, 85 million shares versus 14 million. This is one of those big spikes that's going to show up, and people will talk about it weeks from now. I'm looking at it as an opportunity to get into Qualcomm, which I have now done, reversing my short position, getting long Qualcomm at right here about 40.50. Eugene, quick touch on you in uh, the tech mess. Are there any names that you're picking up today? I mean, Apple, for instance, is trading below 200 bucks right now. Yeah, we still own Apple, and I think also you're going to have good earnings from Microsoft, which we um, also own. I like Nokia's earnings. We, we don't own that, but fortunately, we don't own Motorola. Um, I, I think across the board on um, this market, you can buy technology. I think short term, yeah, you're going to have a lot of consolidation. I think the economic data is sort of breaking down. That's pretty much the driver of why we have down market activity. All right, let's uh, talk about another market buzzkill. There are plenty of them today, aren't there? Commodities. Some of these names like U.S. Steel, Freeport, Mac Moran are down more than 20 percent from their highs, adding to the declines today. Let's bring in the commodities king himself, Dennis Gartman, joins us on the fast line. Dennis, I just noticed uh, crossing the wires of copper is hitting a seven-week low. It is below 310, which indicates to me that perhaps some of these copper names like a Freeport they're broken right now. I, I think they, they actually are, Melissa. I think they've been broken very badly. The commodity markets made some changes dramatically two weeks ago. I think we, sh we need to pay more attention to what happened in the agricultural market when uh, the corn crop report, the bean crop report came out, and, and all of a sudden what had been a, a, a bullish phenomenon suddenly changed. Crops got larger, down with the grains. Following after that went, uh, went the copper market. Gold is now breaking down. Right. What you're seeing is, is weakness in the commodity names across the board. So the free ports, the U.S. steels, uh, those sorts of co uh, companies are under pressure. The companies that are going up, the only ones that you can buy are those that are going to benefit from declining prices. So you're going to see the cereal manufacturers and the restaurants getting stronger. And that's the way to go. Buy the restaurants, buy the cereal manufacturers or the cereal sellers. Right and sell the commodity producers. Going back to the uh, metals complex, though, Dennis, we got some pretty good news out of Ford. We have some very strong uh, auto numbers out of sure. China for 2009. Would you be a buyer of palladium, platinum, those sorts of names, the ETF, or perhaps like a Stillwater Mining? Uh, if you're going to be long of any of the metals, those are the ones, because they're going to be, clearly, there's going to be strength in the Chinese uh, automobile market. They need palladium, they need platinum, and that ETF is, in fact, taking a lot of, of metal off the markets you're going to end up getting a squeeze in those markets. You could actually end up seeing uh, the, the, the futures markets go to a backwardation, which is an odd circumstance. But that can happen if you, if you have to be long of the metals. Those right. are the ones to be long of. Dennis, uh, always a pleasure to get your analysis, especially on a day like today. Dennis Gartman of the Gartman Letter. Dr. Jay, quickly, are you a buyer of any of those ETFs, the uh, palladium platinum ones? No, no uh, I'm not, not yet, and mainly because of Toyota, because the idling of those plants, I think you could buy them two weeks from now and do much better. That is an interesting point there. And Giadami on Ford, good news, bad price action, but is this your opportunity to get in? Not yet. Mullally's a stud. We told you, though, the other day you had to be taking profits in Ford. It traded down to 1040. Price action today is squishy. I think it trades about 10 and 3 quarters, and you look at it there. Squishy, by the way, a technical term. <laughs> Going to take a pause here on the halftime report on tonight's Fast Money. We are staying all over the after hours action and bringing you the latest market moving comments from Amazon and Microsoft's conference calls after the bell. Coming up next, a big CEO lineup on Power Lunch as the gang speaks with both Aetna's chief and the CEO of Devon Energy. Halftime, though, is back right after this. Earnings season has been a dud for this.